Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now on number three from this Mechanics M1 um, International A Level Edexcel paper, which is from June 2021. Here we're given a question about forces. It says, in this question, I and J are perpendicular horizontal unit vectors. Um, three forces, F1, F2, and F3, are given by F1 equals 5I plus 2J Newtons, F2 minus 3I plus J Newtons, and F3 uh, AI plus BJ Newtons. Where A and B are constants, the forces F1, F2, and F3 act on a particle P of mass 4 kilograms. Given that P rests in equilibrium on a smooth horizontal surface under the action of these three forces, find the size and angle between the direction of F3 and the direction of minus J, negative J. Okay, so basically these three forces acting on this particle of mass 4, four kilograms are in equilibrium. So if you add these three forces together, the resultant will be zero. Okay, so I like to write the forces in terms of column vectors. So F1 would be 5, 2, and F2 would be minus 3, 1, and F3 would be A, B. That's how I like to write them. Um, and if I add them together, we know that F1 plus F2 plus F3 equals 0. Why? Because they are in equilibrium. The, the, the uh, force that they're acting on is an equi equilibrium. Okay, so if I add these three forces together, they'll give me 0. Okay, so I have F5, 2, and minus 3, 1 plus AB is equal to 0, 0. So I can make two equations, one for A and one for B. I can say 5 minus 3 plus A equals 0, and I can say 2 plus 1 plus B equals 0. So you have 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 plus a equals 0, so a is equal to negative 2. And you have 3 plus b equals 0, so b is equal to negative 3. So the force F3, therefore, is equal to minus 2, minus 3. Now we need to find the angle between the direction of F3 and the direction of negative j. Now negative j, j is a vertical vector. So negative j is vertical, but in this direction here. This is negative j. This is negative j, and negative 2, negative 3 will go in this direction like this. So minus 2 this way and 3 that way is going to have this kind of shape. Okay, this is the vector minus 2, minus 3. So you can work out the angle it makes with negative j is this angle theta. Let's call it theta. Um, so it's negative 2, so that's going to be a magnitude 2. Negative 3, that's going to be a magnitude 3. So if we look at this, it's like a right angle triangle. We can say the tangent of the angle theta is opposite of a adjacent, which is 2 over 3. So theta is equal to inverse tan of 2 thirds. And that will give us the answer for the angle between this vector and negative j. Okay, so inverse tan, degree mode, degree mode, inverse tan of 2 thirds. 2 over 3. And that will give us our angle, which is 33.6900. So theta equals 30, what was it? 36, 33.6900. .69, continuing on. So I'm going to write it to one decimal place, which is 33.7 degrees. And that's the answer. It's not asking us for a bearing or anything like that. It's asking us for the angle between this vector and negative j. If they asked us for the bearing, we would then give the angle from the north line clockwise, so the angle we got would add to 180, but they're not asking for that, they're asking for the angle between my negative j and this uh, vector, and that's the answer there. That's the answer for three part A. Now for three part B. Okay, the force F3 is now replaced, it's now removed and replaced by the force F4, and F4 is given by lambda times I plus 3J Newtons, where lambda is a positive constant. When the three forces F1, F2, and F4 act upon P, the acceleration of P has a magnitude of 3.25 meters per second. Now, 
we're going to be dealing with acceleration so we have to know the mass okay the mass of p is four kilograms okay so p has a mass of four kilograms you might need that because we're going to be dealing with acceleration here it's giving us an acceleration okay so basically we now have f1 f2 and f4 f3 is now replaced by this so we have f1 as we said is 5 2 f2 is minus 3 1 and f4 is lambda 3 lambda lambda and 3 lambda okay i like to write them as column vectors i just make makes life a lot easier when we deal with them now when the three forces act on p it's no longer in equilibrium there's an acceleration of magnitude 3.25 meters per second squared okay so first of all we know that the force the resultant force is equal to f1 plus f2 plus f4 and we also know the resultant force is equal to the mass times the acceleration so the magnitude of the resultant force is equal to the mass times the magnitude of the acceleration which is equal to the four times 3.25 okay four times 3.25 that's four times three is 12 four times a quarter is one so that's 13 newtons is a magnitude of the resultant force okay so if i can find what the resultant force is in terms of vector and it will be in terms of lambda i can then equate the magnitude of that resultant force to 13 and we should get an equation which we can then use to solve for lambda so let's find out what the resultant force is in terms of these so it's 5 2 plus minus 3 1 plus lambda 3 lambda okay so the resultant force as a vector will be 5 minus 3 which is 2 plus lambda so 2 plus lambda 2 plus 1 is 3 3 plus 3 lambda okay so now what i can say is the magnitude of the resultant force is equal to 13 newtons so what we can do is we can say um, 2 plus lambda squared plus 3 plus 3 lambda squared equals 13 squared okay the square root of that is the magnitude of the resultant force and is equal to the square root of of 13 squared basically all right so that is the magnitude of the resultant force is equal to 13 okay i, I could have put a square root here equals 13 but i've squared both sides so that we can end up with um you know without having to deal with that square root it's just squaring both sides gets rid of that square root so now we can expand and have an equation in lambda so let's expand this you have 2 plus lambda squared which is going to be 4 plus 4 lambda plus lambda squared and 3 plus 3 lambda squared is going to be 9 plus 2 times th uh, sorry 3 times 3 which is 9 times 2 which is 18 lambda plus 3 lambda all squared is 9 lambda squared equals 169 13 squared so you have lambda squared plus 9 lambda squared which is 10 lambda squared you have 4 lambda plus 18 lambda which is 22 lambda and you have 4 plus 9 which is 13 uh, minus 169 equals 0 we'll have a quadratic here so we're going to do 13 minus 169 13 take away 169 which gives you minus 156 so you have 10 lambda squared plus 22 lambda minus 156 equals 0. Uh, we can divide by 2. That gives us 5 lambda squared plus 11 lambda minus, that's going to be uh, 2 into 15 goes 7, that's 78. Let me just make sure of that. Divide by 2, minus 78. Okay, good. Now we need to factorize and solve this um now factorizing this is going to be a bit of a hassle because you got to do five times and said minus 78 and okay i think the easiest thing here to do was just use a quadratic formula which is remember the quadratic formula is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a okay you don't need to quote it as long as you write everything in the right place but you should show your steps here so you have minus b which is minus 11 the term plus or minus the square root of b squared which is 11 squared minus 4 times a which is 5 times c which is negative 78 all over 2a which is 2 times 5 okay so we're going to get two values of lambda from this and then we're going to work out which value we need so let's just stick this into our calculator we got negative 11 
plus, we'll use the plus first, the square root of 11 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 78 over 2 times 5, which is 10. So that will give us one solution, which is 3. And when you put a negative in place of that plus, plus or minus, it makes that minus now. That gives us the other solution, which is negative 26 over 5. Okay, so this thing could have been factorized, but that would have been a lot of hassle. Um, so it says lambda is a positive constant. So therefore, we're going to say, okay, lambda is positive. Therefore, we're going to use lambda equals 3. We will not take this value. Okay, so you should make a, a statement to show that you've, you know, the reason why you've chosen lambda equals 3, because it's positive. Okay, don't just put a little cross next to this. You should write a little statement and then write down your answer as it final answer as it should be. There's one lamb, there's one value of lambda, and that's the positive value. So there we have the answer to this question number three from M1 June 2021. Um, I hope that was clear. Um, other questions from this paper can be found by clicking on this link. Other questions from um, vectors in M1 can be found by clicking on the link that should appear here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this icon that will appear in this area. On the top of the page, you'll find a card which takes you to another M1 paper. And in the description, you'll find lots of uh, links to um, different, my other, uh, you know, exam papers that I've done, M1, uh, P1, uh, P2, P3, P4, S1, also IGCSE papers as well. And in the playlist will be a link to the uh, question paper for the paper eventually when I put it in there. Thank you for watching and see you soon.